Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use IVRs, which is an amazing feature that we've got here. Uh, IVR stands for Interactive Voice Response, and it's basically those phone menus that you've encountered uh, when you dial a, a business and, and you hear a recording say, press one for this, press two for that, uh, press three for something else. And then the user uh, on the on the call can press any button on their keypad and and then you know hear a subsequent nested menu. That's what an IVR is, and uh, it's really powerful. You can do all sorts of stuff with it, and uh, you access it over here in the left hand navigation under IVR. Not surprisingly, uh, right now this account has no IVRs, so we're going to create one together by pressing the create an IVR. Uh, we're going to give our uh, IVR name in this first step. So I click on initiate the first step. This is the very top of the menu when uh, when the user first encounters this. So I'm going to call it um, test or demo IVR training demo IVR. Here is a test of the IVR features. For input type, we're going to select numeric input. That's so that the user can press, you know, the keypad on their phone, one, two, three, four. And then the next step you want is to choose a type of audio. Now, if I'd already recorded my audio and had a, you know, like a wave file saved on my desktop, I could just choose the file this way. But you can also use the software to record it right here in line. So uh, uh, I've got my planned out uh, IVR uh, choices in front of me. I'm going to read here. Hi, thanks for calling us. Uh, to hear a list of our departments, press 1. To be connected to a live sales agent, press 2. To hear our mailing address and hours of operation, please press 3. To send an SMS to our support team, press 4. Or to remove your name from our list, press 5. Thanks. Okay, so that audio has been recorded here. And this is what people will hear on the very first top level of the menu. I'll press done, and you'll see that now that appears as the top level. The next thing we need to do is actually add those options that come underneath. So option number one, um, you can see input number one, that's if the user presses one at that, that uh, first menu. And in my example, uh, item number one was to hear a list of departments, which is basically uh, my way of showing you how to nest a second uh, menu of choices within the first menu. So just like before, we're going to record an audio here in the software. And I'm going to say, for our sales department, press 1. For our customer support department, press 2. And there's that audio. And I'm going to say done for the time being. Oh, uh, I'm going to say nothing. Uh, you do have to choose an input type. So when the user presses one or two at this menu, uh, what are we going to do next? And just for the purposes of this demo, those are going to be dead ends. So I'm going to hit done. And now you can see that our uh, demo IVR has got um, input number one all set. Next, um, I guess, uh, well, let's go back in and edit it to show you how that works. You can always hit the edit, or I'll show you both. I'll show you how to delete. You probably can judge. You can probably guess what that does. I'll redo it now. To be connected with our sales department, press 1. And to be connected with our customer support department, press 2. So I've just re-recorded that. And now I'm going to select um, the input type as uh, numeric uh, options and press done. And now you can see that this menu option has got its own input. So I could press this and you know continue to, to build out the, the tree here. But I'm actually going to back up and take on uh, my, my first level menu again to continue my example. Uh, in our example, option two was to be connected with a live sales agent. So let's cl click that. Input number is going to be two. Just like before, you want to give some audio so that the, the user hears what's um, going to happen next. 
Um, okay, I'll connect you right away with someone in our sales department. So that's what they'll hear when they press number two. Um, and now we have to tell uh, the software who it is we want to be connected to. So I'll select as an input type to forward this call to somebody. Uh, so let's say my sales department is uh, um, phone number is one two three four five six seven eight nine zero. Uh, you want to input this is the phone number that the caller will now be forwarded to the IVR outbound number. Your sales team, your uh, you know your customer support agent, whoever it is that you're trying to connect your 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 lead to. Uh, the next feature, Call Whisper, is terrific. This allows you to add some context to that call so that when your sales agent is connected with the lead, they know what the heck's going on here. So I'll say, uh, I'll record an audio um, right here with the software. Hey, you've got a new incoming phone call from our sales desk. So now your agent uh, your sales agent when they receive this call is going to know oh okay that's that's what's going on they'll hear that quick they'll, they'll hear this hey you've got a new incoming phone call from our sales desk uh, and then they'll actually be connected with that person additionally I like to do this if you put in text you can say something like the leads name is and then any of these keywords which are kind of like merge fields that we pull from the contact in the in the list so uh, if somebody on our list if Mark um, uh, Twain bot <laughs> was the contact and they were listening to this IVR and they they chose option number two because they wanted to be connected with our sales team what the software would do was then it would make a phone call to our sales team and that sales agent when they pick up their phone which again if you remember was at area code one two three four five six seven eight nine zero when that salesperson picks up their phone they're gonna hear this audio recording of me telling them that they've got an incoming lead and then they would hear the software pronounce kinda of like a, a Siri or an Alexa you know voice to text it would say the leads name is and it would insert the first and last name mark you know twain bot whatever the whatever the uh, um, the contact fields are and you can even see that your um, custom fields appear in this keyword list done so that's what a, a whisper feature is for for um, making an outbound call all right, our next option from our top tree, if you remember, was to hear our address and hours of operation. Um, this one is very simple. It's kind of a um, just a dead end, but it's a pre-recorded audio they're going to hear. Our mailing address is 1234 Main Street, and our hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, please feel free to not visit because this is all fake. Okay, so there's the audio that they will hear uh, if they choose that option, and I'm going to select this dead end uh, because that's the end of the that particular branch, and click done. So there's our option number three. Uh, the next one in our main menu, option number four, if you remember, was to send an SMS to our support team. So again. As always, I'm going to record an audio bit for the user to hear. All right, great. Uh, we will send a, a priority SMS message to our sales team and let them know that you need to speak to someone. And uh, now you choose this option here for SMS. This is where you actually enter in the text message that you want to have sent to your, your agent. So. Uh, a caller wishes to um, connect with you. And again, you're gonna put your, your sales agent's number here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Uh, and so when the, u when the user, uh, Mark, presses option number, uh, what was it, three, no, four, 
when they press option number four, they'll hear this introductory auto, uh, audio, and then this SMS content will be sent to my sales agent. A caller wishes to connect with you. And this is the sales agent's phone number. You can also optionally send an SMS to the caller. So this is kind of like a, like a receipt or a verification. Okay. Our sales team uh, was sent an SMS and will be in touch shortly. And since I'm setting expectations and letting them know that they'll be in touch, I'm going to say to my agent, via SMS, because uh, that's how they chose to, the channel they chose to connect. All right, I'm going to press done. And so now our option four is, is ready to go. It, uh, stacked beneath here. You can see it in the menu tree. I can move it around if I wanted to on this visual display or if I had lots of uh, horizontal space on my screen, but I don't, so I'm just going to keep it there. All right, now option number, what are we on, five was to be um, removed from our lists. So let's record the audio for that. Okay, no problem. We'll remove your number from our list. Thanks again. This is always a good one to have, uh, just so that you're not um, uh, angering anybody. And uh, you also, at this point, want to choose nothing because if they want to be removed from your list, that's pretty much the last option they'll want. And here you'll see, this has appeared on the others as well, but this is the first time I'm showing what Fire Actions allows you to do. You can, when they press this button, number five, take any of a, a number of actions. And in this case, what I'm going to do, do is delete. Um, so when they press number five, they're going to hear that audio, that four seconds of audio we just recorded, and their contact is going to be deleted from my list. Um, alternatively, you could move their contact if you had another list set up. For instance, if you had a, a list here called the do not contact list, um, you could do that. That way you're saving their contact information in your database, but your sales team knows that this is somebody that we're not going to contact in the future. So that's probably best practice. But just for the sake of this demo, I'm just going to leave it at delete. Other options you can see here is you know, copy the, the contact into a different list. Um, you could initiate a ringless voicemail, add the user to a campaign, You'll learn about that in another video, or um, initiate a zap so that you could take a, a number of other Zapier automations. But for this demo, we're going to use delete. I'm going to hit done. Now, our IVR looks complete, um, I guess with the exception of this first menu option, which uh, uh, will build out the, the second level of responses on that now. Uh, if I recall, Option number one, or one dash one, if you want to use that nomenclature. So it's menu one, and then submenu one would be um, the sales department. Okay, I will connect you to our sales department now. And I could, the very same choices are available to us if I want to, you know, connect to a, a live person. If I want to have another nested menu, if I want to um, leave a recording or send an SMS, I'm just going to end it with a dead end here. And what was number two? I think number two was the customer support. So number two on this menu is, all right, great, I'll connect you with customer support. And then you'd choose forward the call, etc. But for the purpose of this demo, I'll just do a dead end. And now you can see the full IVR, which starts at the top with menu number one, a 25 second piece of audio explaining what the five options they can press are. Uh, they press option number one, where they're given a nested menu with two more options. Or from the main menu, had they chosen number two, uh, we'll connect them to a live agent. 
Um, option number three was just a piece of audio. They wanted to hear our uh, hours of operation and address. I left that. Four was to, if they chose, they wanted to initiate an SMS uh, conversation with our sales team. So if they press number four, we will send an SMS to our agent and also send an SMS receipt to the caller. And number five was if they wanted to be deleted from our list. So no action is, is or sorry, no IVR uh, option was chosen, but an action was chosen, and that was to delete the contact from our list. So there you have it, uh, uh, an IVR. And now if you look in the IVR tab, you will see the demo training IVR that we just created, and I could create additional ones to my heart's content. I could show and edit this one. If we wanted to go back in there and you know, you'll often call a phone number and they'll say our menu and options have changed, have recently changed, so please pay close attention. This is what they mean, you know, it means that someone's gone in and changed this recently. All right, that's an IVR. Uh, the way you can use it now, I'll go to my list, my training demo list, and if I wanted to call all the people in this list, I could check all of them, and as an option, I could choose make a phone call to all of them, and I want to select an IVR and from the the list of IVRs I've only got one at the moment I could select this training demo IVR I could select the outgoing phone number that I'm going to be calling from again I've only got one configured with the software I could schedule it for later or send it right now and you always want to select that you have permission for compliance purposes and when I hit call the software would go down the list it would call each one of these people uh, and it would present them that recording of my, my IVR. Press one for this, two for that, three for this, uh, etc. Uh, likewise, if I didn't want to send it to everybody all at once, but I just wanted to do you know a single contact, I could press on mark and you know either schedule a campaign that includes my IVR or, um, or call mark straight away and, and make that IVR. So that's IVRs, interactive voice response, and how to use them.